Hey team, we're going to learn how we can test our Next.js serverless functions with Jest. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe for future updates. Next.js is a web framework built on top of React, but the cool thing is on top of that, we can even build API endpoints using serverless functions. To do that, we use what they call API routes, where inside of that route, kind of similar to how you would create a new page in Next.js, we would define a function and define how we want to respond to that invocation. Now, there's already a lot of great ways to test API endpoints, including Postman, but we want a way to actually test the code, not just simply how it responds. So we're going to use the popular JavaScript testing framework Jest, which will allow us to actually run our test on the code, where we're going to import our serverless functions and also abstract some of the code to see how we can harden our tests for our serverless functions. So to do this, we're going to start off with a really basic demo starter that I created just specifically for this walkthrough so we can have an idea of how we can test the code using something that's easy to jump into. If you want to follow along with this project, feel free to grab the link in the description. Otherwise, it should be able to apply directly to your project. So I'm going to get started by scrolling down and I'm going to grab this create next app command, which is going to help me scaffold this project. So inside my terminal, I'm going to simply paste in that command. And what it's going to do is it's going to grab this project from GitHub. It's going to clone it down to my local directory and it's going to install all the dependencies. So I have my application ready to get started. And once it's ready, I can CD into that directory. And before we actually get started, I'm going to open it up in my code editor so we can have a peek at what's actually inside. Now, if we look inside this project, we typically have things like our homepage, where I even went ahead and I created a demo application where you can actually play around with this in the browser, which we'll take a look at in a second, but we're not actually going to use the UI at all for this walkthrough. Instead, we're going to take a look at this API route, where I created this serverless function, where really all it does is it takes a list of items along with a discount and a tax value, where it's going to calculate what that subtotal is along with the actual total, and it's going to return it inside of the function for the endpoint. Now, like I said, we can see what that looks like inside of the browser. So I'm gonna start up my development server. And once it's loaded, we can see that we have this pretty simple UI where all I have here is a pre-existing cart, a way to add some items, and even the order settings so that we can play around with what that actually looks like. But if we go ahead and update those values and we actually calculate that order using the existing data, we can see that it went out and made that request to the cart API, which we can see exactly what it sent by scrolling down which is what we'll use to mock data in a second here. But we can also see the preview of the response where it returns that subtotal and that total exactly how we see it in the UI. So in this walkthrough, our goal will be able to write a test for this serverless function without actually having to invoke that API function using a real request. So like I mentioned before, we're going to use Jest to write these tests. So I'm going to head over to the getting started page and I'm going to copy the yarn add command, head over to my terminal, cancel out my development server, and I'm going to add that as a dev dependency. Now, back inside my code, if I open up my packages.json, a common way to invoke our test is to write a new NPM script called test, where we can simply pass in Jest along with whatever other configuration options we want. With that there, we can even see that if we run test, it's going to actually call Jest, but we don't actually have any tests yet for it to find. So to start off, let's create our first test. And what we're going to do is we're going to first create a new directory at the root of our project called tests. And inside of that, we're going to create another directory called API. And while our first test that we're going to write as an example isn't going to be exactly the API, we'll update it in a second, but this is just going to serve as an example. So we can still use the same naming conventions, but we want to also then add a new file under API and let's call that cart.tests.js. So now that we have our test file, we want to start our test. And to do that, we're going to use the test function, which is going to take two arguments. It's going to first take a description of our test, and then it's going to also take a second function as an argument, which is where we're going to run our test. Now for this example, let's call this calculates order total. Or let's say we have an item with a price of $5, and we also have a constant of quantity, and we have say two items. Now, if we're actually writing this test, we want to make sure that whenever we multiply price times quantity, which is going to give us our order total, that it's going to actually work as expected. So we can use the expect function where we can pass in price times quantity, where this is going to be what we're evaluating. 
where we can then say we want this to equal where the value of price times quantity, and we want that to equal 10. Now here, we just wrote our first assertion where we say we want to expect that this value is going to equal 10. But now if we run yarn test inside of our terminal, we can see that it goes through and it finds that test and we can see that it passed. Now we ultimately want to protect our code from failing, right? So what happens if it somehow breaks? Now let's change this quantity to three and let's see what happens. If I run yarn test, we can see that it again goes through, but this time it fails because it says that it expected it to be 10, which is what we expected it to be, but they actually received 15, which is because we changed the quantity to three. But rest assured, when we change that back to two and we run that test again, we can see that because it's what it expects it to be, it's going to pass. But now that we have a basic understanding of how the test function works, let's actually apply this to our serverless function. So if we look back inside of our API route for our serverless function, we can see that we're exporting this function called handler. So that means just like any other function that we would export from a file, we can import that directly into our test. So at the top of my file, I'm going to start off by writing import cart from, and I now need to navigate up to that tree to find that API route. So I'll say up one, up two, and then pages, API, and then cart. If I now get rid of all of this code inside of my test function and I console log out cart just to see what happens. And when we run yarn test, we can see that it goes through and it actually fails. Now, the issue is if we see inside of these details, it's because we're using an import statement. Now, by default, Jess can't actually understand this import statement. What it would typically see is a constant cart equals require along with that path. But I like to use the import statement syntax since it kind of flows a little bit more with the rest of my project. So to get around this, we're going to actually use a Babel plugin where we're going to say that we want it to transform our code so that it can actually understand those modules. So to start, I'm going to add that as a dependency. So I'm going to say yarn add that package minus D so that it saves it as a dev dependency. But now in my project, I need to create a Babel RC, which is a Babel configuration. So in the root of my project, I'm going to create dot Babel RC. Now when customizing Babel inside of a Next.js project, we need to make sure that we cover the default settings from Next.js, where we can still provide any overrides that we want, but we got to make sure that this next Babel package is still included so that Next.js works as expected. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this example where we're going to set a preset of next Babel along with an empty array of plugins. I'm going to go ahead and paste that right inside of my Babel RC. But now instead of actually adding this inside of the plugins array, we want to only apply this to the test environment. So we're going to define a new property called ENV for environment. And inside of that, we're going to define another property called test. And finally, we're going to recreate that plugins array so that we can pass in our new plugin. But now when we run yarn test, we can see that it goes through, finds the test, and this time it actually runs and it passes because we don't actually have anything inside there, but we can see that it found that handler function. So in order to actually test this cart function, we need to invoke it. So that means we need to run it where we're going to pass in any arguments that it requires. If we look back inside of the function, we can see that it's taking two arguments, a request and a response. So I'm going to start off by creating my request object, and I'm going to currently just keep that as an empty object for now, along with a response object so that we can go ahead and pass these right into our function as arguments. Now to actually fill out those objects, we want to look and see what we're actually passing in. Now for the request object, we can highlight this and look through and we can see that we're only passing it in using the body property, which we're actually parsing because it gets passed in to the endpoint as a string when we're actually making real network requests and we're destructuring our discount tax and items from that body. So we're going to ultimately want to create that body property where we're going to create a new object where we want to pass in our discount, our tax, along with our items. Now I'm going to go ahead and paste these values in, but we can see that I'm sending in a discount of 0.2, a tax of 0.06, a common sales tax here in the US, along with an array of items, which we can see each of those objects inside of the items array have three properties. It has an ID, it has a price, and it has the quantity. That way it has enough information to actually go through and calculate the subtotal and the total for our order. Now, finally, if we remember, we're passing that body in as a string because that's just simply how the serverless function endpoint works. So we want to make sure we stringify that data before sending it through. So on our body, we're going to run JSON stringify and we can just pass that in as a string.
So now that we have our request object, we want to actually create our response object. Now this one's going to be a little bit more tricky. If we take a look and see what it's being used, we can see that it's only being used to create our status code along with passing back a response of JSON. Now typically when you're writing a test against a function, you want to capture the output that's returned and use that for your test assertion. But we're not actually returning any data from this function. Instead, it's using a callback in order to resolve the request. Now to make this work, we're going to use mock functions, which is a way to create a function using Jest where after it's called, we have the ability to actually inspect that function call to see both when it was called, how many times it was called, and also the arguments that it was called with. So that means if we create a mock of both the status and the JSON, we can see when this JSON was called and what data was actually passed back. Now, typically we would write it the same way we wrote this request up here, where we would just write everything inside of a single object like status, and then inside of that write JSON where we would have our function. But because of the way that the, J the Jest mocks work, we're not going to be able to actually access that JSON property from inside of that, where we're going to have to use that in order to inspect it later inside of the test. So instead, I'm gonna first create my JSON constant, which is going to be a Jest mock which I can define as jest.fn, which stands for function. Then I'm going to define my status, which is going to also be a jest function. But inside of that, we're going to actually pass back what we want to return from that function. And inside of here, we want to return an object with our JSON so that when it chains that request at the end of the callback, it's going to be able to find that JSON function and pass back the data exactly how we expect it to. But then we can pass in our status inside of this response object and we can now see that we have all of our data actually fulfilled. Now if we head over to our terminal and actually try to run the test, we can see that it goes through and it runs the test, but nothing's actually happening yet. And it's because we haven't wrote an assertion, we're not logging anything, and nothing's really going on that we can actually see. So to start, I mentioned that once we have this JSON and the status function using just mocks, we can actually inspect that. So let's see what happens inside of the JSON. So after I invoke cart here, I'm going to go ahead and use console log, where I'm going to say I want to log out JSON, but I'm going to log out mock. Now you can go ahead and inspect what happens inside of the JSON object itself, but it's a lot of stuff that we don't necessarily need right now. So let's look directly at the mock object. If we run that, we can see that it's going to go through like usual, but this time we can see our console log and we see that we get all this information about our invocation, where we can see that it has this instance that was invoked where it actually returns that JSON. Now, the thing that we're going to be interested in here is the calls, where that call is going to be where it was invoked and what it was invoked with. So I'm going to go one level deep and I'm going to specify that I want to console log out the calls. And if we run that, we can see, again, it goes through, but this time we can see exactly the data that we passed in when we were trying to run that test. So now our goal, we know that this is a correct value because our code is currently working as expected. So we wanna make sure it always works as expected. So we're gonna grab this value in order to write our assertion, which we can see that it's two arrays deep, and then it's going to be the subtotal property or the total property. We're gonna write the subtotal for now on that object. So I'm going to say, I want to expect that my json.mock.calls, and again, zero, zero to access those arrays, which if we have multiple calls, we might see multiple array objects there. But then we want to access that subtotal where we want to grab that dollar value. And we want to say that we want to expect it to equal that amount. And before we run the test, I'm going to get rid of this console log. And now when we run the test, we can see it goes through. And this time it passed, and this time it actually passed by using this expect statement. Now to prove that this is working, we can see exactly what happens if we actually break this serverless function. Since we're testing the subtotal, what happens if I remove the quantity from the statement, where all it's going to do is for each of the items that are in there, it's only going to calculate the subtotal plus the price of one item, which of course is wrong. But now if I run my test, it's gonna go through, and we can see that it actually fails because it doesn't expect the right value. Now, this might seem like a simple example, and it is because it's intended to be, but this becomes a lot more complicated when you have a lot of business logic revolving around a single serverless function or really any kind of code. But of course, like before, if we remove that actual error and we run our test again, we can see that it's gonna go through and pass.
So this is great. We completed our goal of being able to test a serverless function. And we did that by being able to use the jest function mock where we were able to expect what was inside being invoked for that actual serverless function. But inside of our serverless function, we can already see that there's a lot of stuff happening inside here. So what I like to typically do is abstract my code so that I can have little chunks of logic that I know are working as expected so that we can write tests exactly for that little chunk of code. So to see how this works, let's abstract this subtotal calculation so that we can write a test just for that subtotal. So to create this abstraction, I'm going to create a new folder in the root of my project. I'm going to call it lib. And inside of that, I'm going to create a new file called orders.js. And inside of this, I'm going to export a new function and let's call that calculate subtotal from items where inside of this function, we're going to ultimately return the value, but we're going to take an argument of, of items, which is going to be an array of our items, but back inside of our cart code, let's grab this reduce statement and we're going to simply return that. So when we run this function with our argument, it's going to do the exact same thing as it was doing inside of the serverless function, but it's going to do it in a way where we're simply invoking that function, where we're containing that code in one chunk. Now to make sure this works, let's grab our function and head back over to our serverless function where let's import that function from, we're going to go two levels up to the lib directory and go to our orders file. We're then going to replace this entire statement where we're going to say we want to call that function and pass in our items, which is going to return the value for our subtotal. Now to make sure this still works, let's run yarn test. And when it goes through, we can see that it still passes. So we're good. And when we run yarn test, we can see that it goes through like typical and we can see that it passes. So we're good to go with that abstraction. Now, when I run this test as is, I don't have any information about where it failed if it actually fails. So I want to know exactly what's happening. So what I'm going to do is write a test specifically for this function. To do that, back inside of my test directory, I'm going to create a new folder called lib inside of that. And just to be clear, you can really organize this however you want. I like to try to mimic my actual project directory so that I have a little bit more of a clear understanding of where things are located. But inside of there, I'm going to create a new file called orders.test.js, where we're going to do the exact same thing and run a test for that function. So just like how we used it inside of the serverless function, I'm going to first import our function, but then we're going to start setting up that test where again, we have our string, which is our description of the test, along with the function where we're going to actually write the assertion. So for this one, let's say returns calculated subtotal from items. Now we want to have some mock data for those items. So back over in our serverless function test, I'm going to simply copy this data exactly like we were using before. And I'm going to say constant items is equal to that array. And now when you're writing tests, it's good to vary the data that you're passing in just to make sure you don't have any issues where it's working every time for a specific way. But if you vary your data, you know that you're providing more of a variable like in a real world so that you can make sure it's working in all cases. But now we're going to grab that function and I'm going to invoke it by passing in items. And this time we're going to say that we want to expect that that value is to equal. And because from our other test, we already know that this is going to be equal to 83.47. I'm going to be able to pass that in as my to equal statement. But now again, when I run yarn test, it's going to go through, but this time it's going to find two tests and we can see that they both pass. Now we can again see how this works if this fails and let's do the exact same thing where I'm going to remove the quantity where it's only going to add the price of one for each item. If I run this test, we can see when it goes through that both tests actually fail, which is what we were expecting. We can see that our API test fails because it's returning the wrong value when it's returning the order in the subtotal, but we can see also that it's failing when we're running that specific function. Meaning when we see that that API fails, we know that right now we're able to pinpoint it to that specific function because that's failing as well. This way of abstracting and writing tests can work for all these different parts where we're calculating our discount or we're calculating the tax as these are all important things when we're dealing with money to make sure that our business logic is always working as expected. But again, once we resolve that bug and we run our test again, we can see that it goes through and it passes and we're good to go. Testing is a critical part of development where we're making sure that our code is always working as it expects it to be. Using Jest, we have the ability to test our serverless functions, our abstracted utility functions, as well as a lot of other things that we didn't cover today.
If you want to learn more about how to level up your testing game, you can check out my video where I walk you through how to use Postman to actually test the requests, as well as how you can use tools like Apple Tools to use visual testing to provide really broad coverage for your application, as well as how you can automate all of this inside of your project with GitHub Actions. What's your favorite type of test or what's your favorite library for writing tests? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, if you like this video, make sure you give a thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.